been doing TMP for a while now, as you guys know. I am somewhat familiar with the trends in the marketplace for subcompact 9mm pistols. I would hazard a guess that if you were to take all the subcompact 9mm pistols in the United States from based patriots like yourself, I'm not talking about confiscating, by the way. <laughs> I'm talking about just borrowing it for this uh, exercise in scientific purpose, quantification. And you're to stack all the pistols in a pile. Okay, you have some Rugers over here, you got some SIGs over here, you got some Springfield Hellcats over here. I bet you the Smith & Wesson Shield would win. That's how many they've sold. Now, again, non-scientific, I wish we could do that, <laughs> kind of, it'd be weird, but I think that pile would be enormous of Smith & Wesson Shields that you guys have purchased. Some off my original review like 10 years ago. It's a great gun. The Smith & Wesson Shield was one of the first truly subcompact 9mm pistols to feature the quality levels that you and I have become accustomed to. That would be a big pile of guns. To their credit, Smith & Wesson, through the years, has e aggressively marketed the Shield, giving rebates, low prices, and they have blown out the door. So there are tens of thousands, may, I don't know, maybe hundreds of thousands of shields out there. And uh, from what I know, I don't think people get rid of them like ever. And I bet you that, of course, there's a tabletop on the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus with its 10 and 13 round mag. But I bet you, even after this review, guys are not going to sell their single stack shield. I just don't see it. And I'm an owner. I have a single stack shield. I put an Apex trigger in it, which was expensive and a hassle, but it transformed that gun. I love it now more than ever. It's serving in an active system. It's on the California DOJ list as being legal, subject to change as always in this clown world in which we find ourselves. I don't think a lot of guys are going to sell their single stack shields. They'll just keep it and they'll put in another system, maybe in a motorcycle tank bag, maybe in a vehicle, maybe they'll carry it in certain locations, like if they have, uh, I don't know, a cabin or something. But I, I'm among that the, those people though. I'm not going to sell my single stack shield, albeit I really like this one. Nothing fancy tabletop review on the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. It's basically the same gun in M20 format. Better trigger, flat face, flat face, fat, fat face. I want to say that a fat face trigger. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Has a fat face trigger and some other stuff that you probably already know about. I'm just going to breeze through the the features here. But uh, it is competing, of course, with the P365, the Hellcat, which both of which you'll see here make an appearance because they are some of my top rec recommended subcompact carries the Ruger Max 9 watch for my review on that and so you know should they have done it at the outset uh, I've talked about this at length the answer is of course yes but they're following SIG's lead SIG with the P365 proving that you can make a very reliable semi double stack mag or whatever you want to call it work with basically the same grip circumference uh, can't speak circumference and width that you're seeing right here. This is about the same width as a regular shield. About the same width. But kudos to SIG. They showed the world how it was done and like I predicted in that review, everyone's gonna copy them. At least in terms of magazine capacity. And here we have the Shield Plus. Now at the end of the video I'll ask the question and answer it. Would I buy a Shield uh, or a Shield Plus? And uh, we'll revisit that. You probably already know the answer. Quick discussion on philosophy of use. 20.6 uh, 20, 20 ounces is in the ballpark. So that's pretty good. That's definitely not the lightest uh, 9 millimeter subcompact out there. I still think the Keltec PF9 wins that, uh, barring like some unusual gun. But the, these guns, the Shield 365, Hellcat, maybe the Mossberg MC1, uh, in my opinion, are superior to the PF9. They're built tougher, they're more reliable, they can stand a lot more rounds. Uh, I still like the PF9, I still have it in a tank bag, so it's still in service. I have sold some though. This is a subcompact carry. When you go out your door, you clip it on. 
And I'm going to show you my favorite holsters I've been using. They don't pay me to say this. Again, I'm fully independent. Only sponsored by my donors, of which you should be one. Never too late to join. Never too late to join. Link below. Join up. You'll spend $20 on lunch tomorrow. That would fund you for four months in TMP, this content. Enough said. Tell me in comments what percentage you are carrying, please. If you're going to drop a comment, you don't have to like drop a comment just for that. But if you're commenting, just say, I carry 80%. I carry 70%. And don't lie. Just be totally honest. Here's my answer. Um, like Looking at all phases of my life, and I, I have said this before, I carry... I would say 99% of the time. There is a rare 1% because of circumstances I do not have a pistol on me. Let me know if, if you're that high of a percentage. If you're not, like I've said in past GRVs, you might want to revisit your gun I selection. I told you this years ago. I had a friend that carried this. It was a Browning oh, High Power. Side. This was his concealed carry gun. His name was Jeff. He lived with me, not with me, but same town in uh, Spokane, Washington. And dude, he carried a Browning High Power. This is like 34 ounces, unloaded. <laughs> and he did it with high regularity, I, to his credit. He did. So if you're not carrying it with high percentage, either you're not really dedicated to it, uh, you've gotten lazy, that can happen, your holster isn't working for you, or you're just choosing a gun that's too darn heavy, that's often the case. Uh, you might want to look into the shield plus it is a gun to have on your person when things go bad in rule of law now we've seen some clown things happen in the last year year and a half where rule of law has actually been pushed rather hard and for various reasons i won't go into in this grv the cops have not done their job they've allowed good people to be attacked um beat up uh, sometimes shot at with firearms and so that would go into my without rule of law system and I I might carry this gun as a backup because now my circumstances to engage in an armed conflict may be higher go watch my without rule of law uh, what do I call it the high probability for armed com conflict HFAC and when I posted that, guys were like, oh, this doesn't make any sense at all. Why in the world would you ever do this? You have rule of law, and yet you have a high probability of armed conflict. What do you have to say now? After seeing 2020, 2021, what do you have to say now? So that system or something like it would be employed by myself. And of course, I would avoid, 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 de-escalate, 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 and do everything in my power never to have to use my gun. And I know you will do the same. Subcompact carry. How about a woman's gun? Now, Mrs. Nut Fancy does carry with high probability. I won't give you a percentage because it's embarrassing. It's not that great. But uh, she she would look at this gun and go, that's too heavy for me. And I, most women will do that. I'm just being totally honest. They would probably look at this. Remember, this is 20.5 20 ounces unloaded. You stoke it. Then you carry an extra mag. It's going to be more. I, I think... Um, some women would go for it. I uh, The slide retraction force is a little bit much. I would probably look into the Easy Series, and I have reviewed that. I don't know if I've posted it as of yet, but the Easy Series would be my recommendation. It's not as small as this one. It is a little bit lighter, I think. It does come in a 380, and it's way easier to shoot and very mellow slide retraction force on it so look into that that might be a better option albeit again it's not a subcompact but i've seen all, and engaged with a lot of uh, women shooters and sometimes they don't like the little tiny guns uh when they shoot them because they're very hard to hit with your mileage may vary there you go that's pou home defense probably not has no rail on it i'll add that features well everything centers around this magazine which from my shooting is fantastic. This is the 13 round magazine. You can see it extends out the, the butt just a little bit. Gives you a little bit longer grip, which I think most of us would like. Would I carry that one? Uh, no, I would probably use this as my spare magazine and then I would put in the 10 rounder. So now you have 10 plus one in your shield plus, And then that's flush. I've said in past reviews that I myself don't have a problem with a two finger curl around like that on the grip i still don't i think it's fine 
and I, I, it really depends on your style of shooting, level of experience. There's a lot of people that have an issue with that, so they would probably rock this one. I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference in your holster of choice if you decide to go with the 13 round mag. But I think they were glossy at first, but these are like satin coated. They got a polymer base plate, really nice takedown button, orange follower, great mags. And, and they look just like their competition's mags, right? Very similar. And again, we have that weird uh, visual thing right here. It looks like the magazine, when you just look at the base plate, would go in like that. Never mind the angle, I know. <laughs> Never mind. But to go into the 18 degree grip angle, it goes like that. Have I ever make that, made that mistake? Uh, yeah, I have. Not with this gun, but other guns I have. Out there, just, and I'm not paying attention. I'm trying to put it. I'm like indexing off the base pad, and it's like, wrong. Doesn't go that way. Very M2O-ish, which is awesome. So we covered the M2O improvements years ago here in the project. Great grip on this. I do wish it extended all the way up, as I've said. But it's a really effective stippling. I'm not sure you would have to do anything to this. And the Smith & Wesson products that feature this, as I've reviewed in the past, I just love them. I love them. They're, they're fantastic. It's a great grip. Great grip. Uh, decent beaver tail. I didn't have any pinching at all. The slide is just as we've seen from the Shield Forever. We have scallop kind of fish-like scales uh, in the back. A little bit of a run up front. I don't use those in this pistol. And then the slide is only 0.89 inches in width. The overall width of this 20.5 empty ounce pistol is uh, just 1.02 inches with my micrometer. That's pretty outstanding. There's a witness hole to see if you're loaded. The whole gun is coated in, uh, they're calling it armor knight. It's melanite. So it penetrates the metal. They couldn't use uh, melanite because it's a trademark name. So they just changed it. But it's basically melanite. It's outstanding. Really good coating. It's like tenifer stuff like that so this is a very high quality pistol all the coatings are good the barrel is stainless steel i didn't really measure the width but uh, of the walls of the barrel but you can see it's not a really thin barrel which i do like sometimes manufacturers will thin that barrel out just to achieve a weight to be impressive on paper the sights uh you can get night sights which is awesome i think when the shield plus first came out it was just a three dot variety which are fine i like them um I've said before in other WRVs, night sights, I'm not like, oh, I got to have night sights because I've been doing this gig, I'm talking like having pistols with night sights since like the 80s, and they'll last about eight, year, eight years before they're so dim, you, you just can't use them anymore. In my, in, in my estimation, that's about what it is. Maybe a little bit longer, the MEPs last pretty good, the Tridges last pretty good, but these are always going to be bright white, but if you have, you know, low light encounter maybe you should think about uh, getting some night sights it will cost you a little bit more money same takedown lever as before same takedown procedure which i like i don't have any problems with it at all there's a slide release it is very uh truncated and i don't know subdued uh probably slingshot will work i think most people do that i think i was using that slide release and it did work on the plus side it has really good traction just like the original and then we have uh, a flat fat face trigger i don't want to go with that the fat face trigger i pulled it tonight at five pounds two ounces let's check it out i would say it's okay it's not amazing i think my apex trigger on my other one dominates it let's check reset a little bit of plasticness there a little bit of plastic rub it's okay um I'm a, a little surprised that the trigger is not better in this because the triggers in, in the competition are so amazing. If there was a, a criticism I was going to level, and I'm talking not in terms of practicality, but just in terms of competitiveness with the products that it goes up against, I would have improved the trigger. Uh, as it is, guys may ask, hey, would you put an Apex trigger in the Shield Plus? Mm, probably not I'd probably just live with this one and deal with it it's not bad it's not a bad trigger and a lot of y'all like the flat face there you got the metal uh, tr trigger face in it which is nice but the trigger itself is polymer somewhat undercut here in the molding we don't have a flat here on the front of the trigger guard I've talked about that a lot I'll spare you my rant there is no rail here at all 
So a little bit surprising, a little short run would have been nice because there are some super compact uh, lasers that guys may want to put on, but you don't have that. Uh, have they added it in other variations I haven't seen? I don't know. I've had this gun from Gunny's, the great American gun store, for about six months. Thank you, Wyatt and company at Gunny's. Go give them a, a visit. Punch Wyatt in the shoulder. Buy from them. I don't know. Sometimes the guns I get from Gunny's are somewhat dated. They're not absolutely fresh. It's just the way it works out. Let's retract this. Steel guy rod, double captives, recoil spring as before. I mentioned the takedown already. Let's take a look at this side right here. Big ol' extractor. It's shield. I mean, it's all shield. The big plus, of course, is uh, the magazine. And again, I, I don't have my shield, my normal shield here on tabletop to compare because it's in a super secret place. But if I did, you would see that the narrowness of the grip is very similar between the shield and between the plus. How did it shoot? Uh, well, I let off with that for me, it's not magical. I'll stick with that. I have to work to get really good groupings. I could not find my paper, and I'm kind of glad because it's going to make the review go quicker. I will roll in my shooting footage. You can pause or actually slow-mo the video, and you can see the holes hitting the target. And I think it was like at nine yards standing, which is a long way for a pocket pistol. And I think my groups were an unimpressive three inches. Now, some people may go, well, that's really good for a subcompact pistol. Um, I would agree with that. It's not bad. I don't know if it's really good. Uh, magical to me is like uh, within an inch, once again. And the competition with, with me on a good day can do that. That being said, I fired several hundred rounds through the sucker. 100% reliability. No stoppages. It just immediately out of the box uh, gave me a sense of confidence. I, I think without any break in, yeah, I, I would like you to run at least maybe two boxes minimum through your Shield Plus, but you could just put it in service right away. That's how good these guns are. They are bet your life reliable. They're covered by Smith & Wesson's lifetime warranty. They're very, very good. So I'll classify the accuracy with my shooting. Again, you could be a lot better than me and I would not doubt that at all. I would say good not excellent with me now that's talking about paper now when I go on steel then that's kind of a different thing and I've always kind of made that that um, that separation in TMP on steel it was fantastic I didn't miss very much at all as I remember very excellent I was shooting out to 25 yards and that's kind of where we should judge the pistol practical accuracy so the steel plate i'm shooting is like 10 inches around maybe 12 inches i forget which one i was shooting yeah it, it shot great that way so reliable <clears throat> the uh recoil impulse on the shield plus i think is pretty soft i didn't notice or don't remember a lot of muzzle flip i think the hellcat by springfield is a lot more flippy i still love that gun but it's still a lot more flippy here's your bore axis same as before Again, you can achieve a pretty high grip on your shield. Your MP9 Shield Plus. So, uh, competitive offerings. And I've been mentioning them all along. I'm going to show you the holsters. Uh, here's the Hellcat. And it's in probably my favorite of all time. Outside the waistband, inside the waistband holster. It's from Kuziak Leather. I'll put a link below. And some of my favorite models below. Again, they don't pay me. I buy these from them. But look at how thin this is, dude. Look at this. This is thin. And it grips so well. I mean, it's form-fitted to every gun. Look, I'm having to, like, yank it out. There's my Hellcat coming out of an active system, so it's loaded. Let's compare it against the Shield Plus. Interesting comparison. I just love the Hell Hellcat. I really love it. It's, of course, like a shrunk XDM, and I love the XDM. The bore axis isn't ultimately low. Like I said, it, for me, it does kind of have some muzzle flip, but it's superbly accurate. It has magical accuracy with me, and it has that flat face trigger. I think the trigger's better in the Hellcat, as I remember. It has somewhat of a better magazine release. I forgot to mention that. There's a shield mag release, and you can swap it, I believe, to that other side if you, you want to. Hellcat's fantastic. I just love that gun. It's so excellent.
Love it, love it, love it. And incidentally, you may have caught that I said this is an inside the waistband and an outside the waistband holster. And this is a new thing I haven't told you guys, and this is how I'm carrying out. And this is with my man pack, my, my fanny pack. Uh, so I'll put this in. This is a right side inside the waistband holster. That's what it's meant for, right? But what I do is I clip this offside outside the waistband under my belt and I just put this very strong steel clip under it and this is how I'm carrying it these days. I know it's cross jaw, but I have my gun and you probably don't. <laughs> so I'm not going to take no guff for that. It's outstanding. I carry uh, all my subcompact nines this way frequently i still use the galco classic light holster but it's it's you know it takes longer to put on i got to take the shirt off throw the holster on put the shirt back on this is just a clip and go clip and go so experiment with it if you get one of these kuziak leather holsters they're so thin and they carry so well highly recommended form fitted again they'll take a little while to get get yours made i think they make it to order all made in the usa of course uh, I think like a month. So it's not super quick, but it's a small American company. They're, it's a family owned thing. So there you go. Here's a P365 again in a Kuziak. So I do the same thing with the P365 and it is another beloved, highly beloved competitive offering against a Smith & Wesson, Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. Man, I love the 365. <laughs> I love it. Look at all the lint carrying it, dudes. This is active too, coming out of an active carry system. This one has a ton of rounds through it. I would say at least 1,500 rounds at this point. And it's 100% super accurate, magical. The trigger is just fabulous. I mean, I can't say anything bad about the P365 trigger, except maybe for small hands, it's kind of a far reach. So let's compare that. It looks about the same, really, on a side-by-side. -side. Let's go top view, P365 against a Shield Plus. The 365 continues to sell and probably to this day dominate the concealed carry market. And uh, I know I said a huge pile of Smith & Wesson Shields, but I'm going back to like 2008. But nowadays, I think most people are buying something like this, like this. And it will remain to be seen if the Shield Plus can push its way into the market uh, against these really, really com competent players and uh, start, you know, maybe making uh, sales leads um it'd be interesting it'll be interesting to see would i buy a smith and wesson 9 shield plus yeah i would i would would i buy it over a p365 no would i buy it over a hellcat no i wouldn't but i still like the gun but i as you guys know i shoot straight in my tabletops i don't pull any punches I like the Hellcat and the P365 a little bit better than the Shield Plus. That being said, it's a very competent gun. It's light enough to enter the subcompact carry market. And let me know if you have one, if you love it, and comment if you feel so inclined. By the way, this is that Almar Kershaw collaboration knife, 2330 and 8CR13 MOV. It's a great, great deal for what you get. Really nice knife. I might put a link below. And by the way, dudes, I have filmed videos showing this, but this is Blade HQ's special coloration on the Victorinox blades. This is a Spartan, um, what do they call it? Spartan Plus. It's got the scissors. Yeah, and then they have a Spartan. They have a Classic and maybe one other. They sell very quickly, but they call it the Loco Lobo. Really cool. Just beautiful colors. They're almost like TMP colors really yeah this is cool uh this between a spartan which one would i go for i don't know hard question you know i like the scissors man they're super helpful <laughs> if i have scissors in another system i'd probably just go with a plain spartan which by the way i'm carrying edc not set up this was from a tmp patreon member charles new he gave me this one oh i'm sorry i was calling a spartan this is actually a tinker sorry tinker I get the names confused. Uh, so this is a Tinker. And I think <laughs> a Tinker Plus. I'm sorry, I'm not screwing the names all up. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Links below, you can check them out. Uh, we are maybe going to do a merch push. So keep watching the show. I think uh, the shirts we're going to come out with, the new stuff we're going to come out with, it's summer of 2021. If TD can push this stuff through, you guys are going to love them. Very, very exciting. As we push through year for, uh, 15 in clown world. 
clown world. That's what we're in. We're, uh, you know, the upside down or right reigns day in, day out. But I'm going to keep chugging along with the support of my donors. Thank you so much.